Okay, here we are picking up our 2017 Ford Transit uh, 250 high roof extended van. Brand new off the lot. This is before she had the packaging stuff done on her. And if you notice, the windows are not tinted. We tinted them after. Finished product. This is us on one of our trips across the island of Newfoundland. Here's where we had some uh, stuff laid out, trying to estimate placement, measurements, uh, everything fit within millimeters. Uh, here's a picture of the ceiling, insulation R12, all screwed together with the uh, deck screws. Tried to make it as strong as possible because that's what supports the cupboards. The framing actually is in spaced out. Um, intervals just for cupboards so and in one spot you can see I actually doubled it up there to make the cupboard fit perfectly and give it extra strength. Here's the first try at the Murphy bed. Uh, actually had a frame built around it first. You can see the black black edges there uh, and was folding it up and down to see if we actually had the room for it to fit. A uh, temporary leg underneath it. Uh, we, we tried several different ways there supporting it. Uh, trying to get it just right so we didn't lose any strength. Here's a picture of the covers from Ikea, first placement. Uh, went with a snow drift paneling on top. Just screwing the bed up here, finished for the night. <laughs> you notice the subfloor too, we had the subfloor in the van there. We actually used the uh, inch rubber mat that came with the van and then put the sub subfloor over that. So there's actually an inch insulation in the floor. Here's how I uh, fasten everything to the van. I, I went right through the two by four into another two by four block with a deck screw. So it makes it really strong, really steady. And a lot of times I'd take her out for a run after uh, I had stuff put in her to make sure she wasn't creaking and stuff. Here we are checking for placement of the cupboards again. Uh, in the previous photo, you noticed that the bed was out of the uh, uh, van. We actually took the bed in and then four or five times trying to get it to fit properly. Uh, my wife unwrapping the indie mattress, 10 inch foam mattress. Uh, this is a pretty happy day. We knew it could fit, knew it could work. Uh, you actually got the allow for the thickness of the mattress too with the Murphy bed when you fold it up. So you had to get it the right distance from the back of the van. It was a lot of work. Uh, here we are tracing the mattress for trimming. You'll notice in other videos that the bed is actually on a rounded edge on the front. And we've done that just to give ourselves a little bit more leg room for getting in and out of the bed. Here's the cupboards looking forward. Uh, again, uh, different ideas for bed support here. We were going to try two by four first. I ended up going with a really thick plywood, uh, three quarter inch, and uh, actually bolted some two by four on the inside of that. Then I used carriage bolts for the actual swing on the bed. Uh, here's some cubby holes. We placed some cubby holes in the top left and right hand corners of the van to give us some extra storage in it. Here's uh, doing some wiring and lighting. All the lights in this van are remote control. Uh, I didn't want any switches anywhere. Uh, well, I had to go with a couple of switches just for water pump and stuff. But the lights are all remote control DC. Picked it up on Amazon. It's a neat little unit. I actually bought a couple because just in case one failed, I didn't know the quality of them. But I've been using it now for months, haven't had an issue with it. And it wasn't that expensive. It was really nice, really slick. And we actually mounted all the controls. Uh, you'll see it here coming up soon. Uh, they're actually underneath the passenger seat, under the swivel, the turnaround uh, part for the, uh, <laughs> the van. Um, oh, cutting the first hole. Big deal here. Brand new machine. <laughs> and we were trying to put in the roof van. Uh, we ended up going with the Max Air. Because uh, again, that can be open while driving. Um, don't have to worry about any rain coming through it. Uh, so that's why we went with that rather than the Fantastic Fan. We had researched both of them pretty good, but again, we decided to go with the Max Air. Uh, here's the first hole cut. <laughs> we uh, I actually trimmed it up with some uh, tin snips. The metal's really easy to cut. Um, had a really good tip from another YouTube video, and I actually thank the gentleman who had the YouTube video. Uh, but the metal fallings, make sure you get all of those off the roof because uh, we, we had done this and it was a week later or something I watched his video and yeah the metal fallings just ate right away at the metal on his roof so make sure you get all the metal fallings off the roof after you put the fan in. 
Uh, I lined it with some uh, sealing tape there just in case water would get around the edge or rust the edge. So I just sealed it up with some tape. And then of course your standard putty and mounted the bracket in place. Put in some extra wood supports there inside. I was trying to show you that because it's a little flimsy there where, after you cut it. So I just added some wood supports to straighten up that whole metal part there. There you can see the uh, gasket I just bought at a local RV center. Uh, much like a tape, you just stick it down and then you put the roof vent onto it. We haven't had any leaks or anything, everything looks fine. Uh, picture the fan in uh, and some wiring for the fan there. Uh, the fan actually draws very little in amperage. Uh, I tested it a number of times, it draws like 1 amp or something, 1.2. Uh, now, again, if you got it on the high side, I think it's a little more. But in general rule of thumb, for us, it draws about an amp. So I hook the lights of the van, LED, and the fan vent up to these uh, gel-type batteries. Uh, just regular, like, uh, emergency lighting batteries. But anyway, it's worked fine. I just put them on the charging system of the van, and they charge up while we're driving, and you can use it all night, no problem. Again, uh, putting in cubbies here, and... Uh, Oh, this is the flooring. I uh, bought the flooring at uh, a local Kent store. Um, that's just a hardware store here in Newfoundland. Um, my wife picked out all the colors, of course, because I am definitely no good at that. Again, support here for the bed. You can see the three quarter inch plow going in. Um, done in the wheel wells. That's about the only way I could figure out to do them to make them look half decent. And uh, again, like I say, this never happened overnight. This was trial and error, in and out, bed in and out. You can see the bed's gone there again now. <laughs> uh, here's the ceiling. Uh, that was quite simple after the roof vent went in and we already had the 2x2 two two beams in place. Uh, I came down 28 inches, I think it was, 28 or 26, uh, with um, just a light board, 1 8 all around her. And it, it was very easy to support that after because I just put up some 2x4 on, like where the blinds went to after and just supported it that way. And then when I put the moldings on it, the wood molding, I tried plastic first, then I put wood on it, and it really straightened up good. It's really strong. Haven't had any issues with it whatsoever. Now, we're just getting ready here to put the bed back in, because we've got, we've decided on our design. Uh, we know the supports we're using. So this is just building the supports on both sides of the van and uh, standing up with some two by four and stuff. You notice that the edge of the uh, bed support too is level with the window. Again, just done that on purpose so um, like there wouldn't it wouldn't be as much trimming around the window or trimming around the window when you're done. And it looks really sharp like because you're sort of fooling your eye that the, the ledge is just a little tiny bit higher than the lip of the window, but it looks really good. Uh, the bed here, uh, again, you can notice that it's trimmed. Uh, we have no headboard here yet. My wife didn't want to have access from the back windows all the way through the van. She wanted a headboard there. So I think there's a picture coming up here now where you can see the headboard. Right there. Oh, these are the batteries I was telling you about underneath the front passenger seat. Uh, there's loads of wires there with a trickle charge, like 12, 12 volts. So when you start up the car, it only comes on like with the alternator, 14.4 volts. I just joined it into one of those wires. It must be for something in the seat. I don't know. And again, these are not a heavy amperage batteries. I think they're only seven amp hours each. Uh, again, they're good for all night, no worries. You could get about a day and a half, two days out of them before you really need to charge them again. This is the DC remote control unit for the lights in the van. Uh, you can notice me there, I got uh, one light on A channel, then I got the other light on B channel. I actually put the forward light, two lights on A channel and one light on B channel. Uh, they're 9 watt LED 12 volt uh, lights. Very bright, very bright. A lot of times in the nighttime, me and my wife just use a little LED strip like you can purchase at Walmart. Uh, here's a picture of the headboard gone in. And the headboard was a nice addition because it does really tidy everything up good together. Uh, here's the uh, retractable coil cable. I mounted it in a wooden box and mounted it underneath the van. Um, again, uh, time restraints, I went with wood. Uh, probably would have used metal like if you're going for a long term. But again, I didn't really know how this was going to work out. So I may even revamp it, rechange it again. 
and as anybody knows who built the van, the van's a work in progress. It's never done. You're always working on it. You always come up with another idea. So um, I might change some of this around again. Again, wooden box for the water tank. Uh, water tank and pump is housed in one box. I uh, I got that off another one of our friends here on YouTube. I thought it was a really good design because the pump's underneath the van. Um, you can easily take it down if you want. Uh, the way I suspended everything was sort of like an electrical cable tray system. I'm an electrician by trade. Uh, so I actually mounted a ready rod to the bottom of the van. And then the ready rod hangs down and I used a square clamp of aluminum to secure these to the bottom of the van. Again, we've been all down to New York, uh, Texas, haven't had an issue with anything coming off the van. Good support. Here's a little video of the uh, water, first water out of the pump. Uh, I just tried it before I put the cover on and mounted it in the van. So it's just a um, uh, pressure pump. So once you turn off the valve, the pump shuts off. Nice little water flow. And again, it's just testing things before I put it in an area where I easily can't get it. Here is the heat pump and fridge. Uh, the heat pump, it works fabulously. I oversized it. Uh, well, I think most RVs have about 13,000 BTUs, but if you calculate the square footage of the van based on the BTU conversion chart, like 13,000 is an absorbent amount of energy for that space. However, uh, again, I guess people who design these RV things, they know, but uh, you need that 13,000 BTUs. Uh, she absorbs a lot of heat and she absorbs a lot of sunshine when the sun's shining on it. Uh, that's the, uh, we put in two sinks in the van, one on one side for hand washing after you use the porta potty and then the other side for dishes. Uh, this is the one on the other side going in for the dishes. You can notice here she's getting in advanced stages here now to bid is in, Chesterfield's in. Uh, we added a shower too, indoor outdoor shower. Um, I don't have the indoor part completed yet. You can use it out by the door if you want to wash your hands or your hair or whatever. But again, uh, there's so many showers available when you're on the road and I don't even know if you really need it, but we have it in there anyway. But we never really use it, to be honest. This is the sink for the dishes. Put in a hot water tank too, a six gallon hot water tank. Uh, looking back on it now, again, I might change that. I might make it a little bit smaller um, because I, the idea was that we're going to be showering in the van, as you can see the shower in operation here. Uh, but we never use the shower in the van. Like if you're staying in any camping lots, stuff like that, like you can get a shower easily every couple of days. There's, uh, <laughs> this is my wife trying some different designs on the bed. Uh, she wasn't happy with some of the design she had tried so she had tried several uh, here's with the blinds in uh, a cloth blinds because they fit so nice around the window uh, we tried a uh, like a wall um, I don't know if you call it a Walmart blind but a roll-up shade first didn't work so well uh, you had to go with the cloth and the blind because it covers the window nice uh, Kissaboo 2 that's above our headboard that has a, there was a Kissaboo 1 <laughs> believe it or not <laughs> Uh, here is the cupboards installed, Ikea. This is some of the finish work. Here's the porta potty and its uh, shelter on the side. You can see there the switches for the water pump. Uh, fireplace. We added a fireplace here, vent free. Beautiful, beautiful in the nighttime. Um, just relaxing, fire burning. Um, when we put that in, though, however, we added, I got it, can't stress this enough, make sure you add detectors. We put in one on the bottom for CO. We put one in on the ceiling for CO. I don't think you can have enough of them if you're burning any propane in an enclosed space like this. So make sure you have detectors. Here you can see she changed the headboard again. Uh, those cushions come off the Chesterfield. They actually lay on the seat of the Chesterfield and then the bed falls down on top of them. So that actually gives the bed a little bit more support too. A TV uh, with a hard drive on it for movies, stuff like that. You can see it there. Uh, it swings out. It's on a swivel arm. Uh, I think we bought it at Walmart. Um, right there is the microwave in the lower cupboard. A uh, thousand watt microwave. Or, uh, no, I'm sorry. I think it's 700. But that runs off the inverter. The battery can last. We can go indefinitely because all you have to do is start up the engine if your batteries are getting low. I put in a welding cable 
from the alternator right back to the battery. So I have three batteries in this thing right now. Now again, I might even change that because I'm, I'm think they're 12 volts right now. I might go with two six volts. Uh, there's a picture of the fireplace and like the, and the bedding and the bed folded down. Uh, we use a little step there. You can see the step on the floor to get up on the bed. And again, we had to put it that high because to fold over the Chesterfield. Uh, they're sacrifices. You gotta make sacrifices. Um, if you're trying to get everything to fit. And we really wanted Chesterfield, we really wanted the bed. Actually, when we started off building the van, the bed was our number one. This is our final design on the back of the bed. It looks nice. Uh, and you notice there the black moldings on the edge gives a lot of strength to that material that I hung down 26 inches. Uh, this is the porta potty seat made up. We had a local seamstress on the curtains, the leather work, the mattress trimming for us. She was awesome, really talented lady. Uh, there's a little cubby hold on the sides. We use that for storing our laundry and stuff when we're on the road. <coughs> Again, picture the TV front sink. You can see the molding there too that straightened up the uh, bottom part of the ledge for uh, the material that was hung down and wallpapered. Uh, oh, the heat pump. You see that's black here? We actually had changed it. The white one had a leak in it. So we actually put in a black one. Same BTUs though. It came from Costco. And it can do heat and air conditioning. And uh, this is us. Too.